Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for our 10 minute webinar. We do not have a lot of time, so we're gonna jump right into it. Um, if you have questions, put them in the question box and this webinar is being recorded so you can take a look at it later. So today, uh, Ryan Houston is joining me. I'm Monica McMahon, and we are so excited to be showing you the BACnet browser. It is one of the most powerful things in visual BACnet if you know how to wrangle it properly. And we are gonna do our best to teach you that today. Hi, Ryan. Good morning, afternoon and evening. <laughs> you never know where people are. <laughs> so um, the BACnet browser uh, is accessible for any file, whether you're in troubleshooting or monitoring, you will get this same screen. And on the left-hand side here, you can go to BACnet browser. So the BACnet browser, um, I like to call it a glorified version of Wireshark filters. So what we've done here is there's tons and tons of different ways to look at all of the packets in your file and dissect them differently. The default um, view when you click into it, just as I did, is taking every single BACnet packet in your file and showing you who the source or who sent that file. So in this example, um, 18.203 is sending a lot of the packets. It's very likely that that's the server. Um, and this is where you need to apply your knowledge. So if that's the server, then that's probably totally fine. However, if that's a little thermostat on the wall, that's not so fine. Now, so that's be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> your thermostat sending 23,000 packets, that's a problem. So um, this kind of applying your knowledge of the site to this view can be really helpful. Um, but maybe you don't actually care about who's sending the packets, you only care about where all those packets are being sent. So if you click on destination here, we rearranged all those exact same packets to show them by the destination. Same thing, um, that's, if that top one is the server, that's probably great. If it's some small device somewhere that can't handle a lot of traffic, that's gonna cause you problems. One of my personal favorites is the service choice. Um, this is telling you what types of traffic are most common on your site. In this example, we've got a lot of read property multiples. Um, that tends to make a lot of sense. You're looking for a lot of data, especially if you're pulling analytics um, or, or just generally trying to send the data from one controller to another, you're gonna be asking to read the property. The second one in this one is who is. That means there's a lot, there's 11,000 packets in this half hour capture um, that are saying who is this device and they're, they're looking for devices. That could be a little problematic. Um, if they're global who is, we have a diagnostic check for that and we will, will catch that there's a lot of global traffic sending. But based on the fact that there's only 1,000 IAMs, it's likely that these are specific who is. Who is device 73? Who is device 1084? Um, but still not super normal. It's, not, it's, you know, if you have a fairly static system, it shouldn't be doing a lot of looking for who is this device. Um, so that might be something to look into. Don't always be too alarmed with that as well. Different BMS manufacturers, they will just do a, a check every so often to see if the device is online. And that could be part of what this is. So it's very manufacturer dependent. Yeah, absolutely. Good point, Ryan. Um, and if that's the case it, with some manufacturers, you can change the frequency, but you can't stop it altogether. So you might be able to change it from one minute to half an hour, but it's still gonna have to happen every half an hour. So there may or may not be some play in there. Um, PDU type, uh, it's looking at the type of, of packet. So is it a re confirmed request? So it's a request that needs a response, um, a complex acknowledgement, an unconfirmed request. So it's a request that shouldn't have a response, uh, simple acknowledgement, segmented acknowledgement. It's a few different options here. Um, I don't look at this one a ton, but it can be useful when we get into drilling down and we'll talk about that in a second. Just, a, I wanna add a point here, Monica, just at the mm -hmm. very bottom there, you see a couple extra ones, the abort and the error packets. Mm -hmm. These are very, very common when you're interacting with third party devices. It's maybe your piece of equipment is sending some information and it's in error. Maybe the third party device doesn't accept that type of packet where in that case you'd have to refer to the back deck check statements and, and that sort of thing to determine. But that's a, a pretty good way of very quickly determining what's going on. 
Yeah, and the error one will also show up in our error response diagnostic check. Um, Ryan, I know you love the vendor. I like the vendor. Uh, the vendor is every single device that we can see and what their vendor ID is. The only reason I like it is we always have conversations. How many backup vendors do you have on your site? I don't know. Well, here's a way that you can actually know. And you can tell on exactly how much of it is sending what traffic. So here yeah. the, it's pretty light in this site, but we've seen cases of 30 plus different vendors. So it gets pretty exciting. And again, this should make a lot of sense to you. If you go, whoa, wait a minute, we only have one Mitsubishi device and it's sending 10,000 packets in half an hour, um, that might be something to look into. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out, there's a lot of NA or not applicables here. Um, again, the BACnet browser is looking at every single packet and the information in that packet. The vendor ID is not specified in every single packet type. So there will be a lot of packets being sent where it's not saying the vendor ID. And so those will show up under NA. UDP port, Ryan? Again, with the UDP port, another way to look at your site and see how it's segmented. Uh, as we know, everything on one UDP port, such as 47808, everything can talk very, very easily and simply. If you have multiple UDP ports, then you're not always crossing traffic. So it's a way to see how segmented is the site? Is everyone talking? Is this particular UDP port completely overloaded? It gives you some more information. And again, it's another way that you can troubleshoot in a different way. Um, all of these last three are similar. So this is showing, showing you the source network. So the network that the packet was sent from, as well as the DNet or the um, destination network. So what network is it being sent to? And you'll notice that when I click this, this graph um, updates accordingly. Um, and the combination of the source network and source address, which should be a unique combination with every device on your site. So that's all of the uh, different things you can look at, but the power of the BACnet browser is really in the ability to um, mul put multiple filters on top of each other. So for example, um, it's pretty common that we're going, whoa, there's a lot of read property multiples. We want to see who, what device is requesting the read property multiples. So we click into service choice and we go, I want to see only the read property multiples. This automatically it's showing you all of the read property multiples by source. But now I want to go, well, if source will show both who requested and who responded, those both count as read property multiples. I only want to see who's requesting. So we can go to PDU type. This is where the PDU type comes in handy. And we're going to only look at the requests. So errors, that's a different story. We'll look at that in a different time. But right now, I only want to look at who's asking for the read property multiples. So now that I click on that, it's showing me that all of the read property multiples are being requested by this source device. So um, now if, if you're having problems with them or you're going, oh, it's way too many, then you could go and look at that specific device. You can reset by hitting this, uh, this little house here. Um, another common use is I want to see all of the packets that are going to a specific destination. Are we totally overwhelming this device? So let's pick this one down here. And what type of packets? And then, yeah, so now we're going, okay, so these are all the packets um, going to destination 19.46, but what is being sent to it? So we can look at all of the service choices being sent to that device. And then as you drill down further, maybe you're going, whoa, what is, um, what's the read range? Why is it doing read ranges and not just read property multiples? You can click on that. And then maybe you go, okay, great. Now that I've got that far, I don't need to, to filter anymore. I just want to see the actual Wireshark frame. Maybe there's something in there that you need to dig out. So you can click on show frames, depending on how big your window is, it may show up at the end here. And don't forget these frames are, are already filtered to show you uh, the frames associated with your filtering. Yeah, so now we're showing you all of the frames of the destination of 1946 that are read ranges um, and you can click on any of them to see what they are. You can open that APDU and go, oh, it's object, it's a trend log. Um, you can figure out exactly what it is. Looks like so, it's telling me the trend log's full. You better come get it. 
<laughs> empty exactly. the information. Exactly. So we're out of time, but I am going to very quickly show you an example. So we have some missing acknowledgements here. And a lot of the time we end up going into the BACnet browser because we see something in a diagnostic check. So a great example, we'll click on our missing acts and go, whoa, this device has missed 269 acknowledgements. One of the reasons could be that it's being overwhelmed with traffic. So one of the ways that we can go, okay, is it being, are we sending it too much traffic? We can go find this 10.1.19.62 in the BACnet browser and see all the traffic being sent to it. So let's do that. Now, so we'll correct me if I'm wrong, Monica, once we do that, we can also see a timeline of how that data was sent as well. Yes, exactly. So we'll go into the destination. So this is all of the packets that are being sent to that device that's not acknowledging. They're all coming from this device, which we are hoping is the server. Um, you would know this if this is your file. Um, and we can see it doesn't seem, uh, it goes up to 60 packets um, per second, which is a lot for a small device, but not a lot for a big device. So again, device knowledge will help. Maybe you want to say, well, what kind of packets are we sending to it? Or, or, or be multiple, but also a lot of read property. Could we change those read properties to read property multiples and therefore send less of them? So again, this is all hypothetical in this file, um, but that kind of gives you an idea, of, hopefully, of how we use the diagnostic checks to figure out where the problem is. And then we can go into the BACnet browser and use the filters to try and understand what might be happening around to cause that problem. So um, if anyone has any questions, please let us know. We will get back to you. Um, but that's it for our 10 minute webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great insight, Monica. Have a good day. Bye.